What's going on, everyone? Thanks so much for tuning in to the Tintin Studios overview of the Mix Station X Air app. My name is Terrence. So glad you can join us today. Now, this is a video just following up behind the previous videos we've done for the X Air Q and the X32Q mobile apps. And this particular device we're working with today is the Samsung S9 Plus. Before we had a older device, the Samsung Note. So these particular applications can work on newer devices and older devices just alike. They're not complicated, doesn't take up much resources, and it works essentially exactly the same. And for those who have not checked out those previous videos, please do so to kind of get caught up to where we are. This is going to be something that's very simplified. It's not going to take up much of your time. We just want to make sure you get a good comparison and overview look of which map app might be best for you. So for those who use the X Air series of devices and the X32 Behringer devices, this is going to be good for doing monitor mixes, uh, individual mixes and such, and also for front of house mixes if you need to from a remote location other than your physical unit based upon your setup. So once you got things set up, you got your Wi-Fi network going, you want to connect your device straight to the Wi-Fi network, of course. You don't want to be disconnected, otherwise it just won't work. It's just that's how it is. And you're going to open up the appropriate app per your device. So we're working on the X-Air 18. So we're going to open up the MixStation X-Air app. And once you get the first time you install it or you open it, you're going to get a user agreement and license user agreement that you got to look at, review and such and accept and go through those steps. Pretty much you should be familiar at this point on how that looks. Once you've done all of that, you want to search for your device and it's going to prompt you for whatever device it finds and the IP address. If for some reason it doesn't find it, you can try to type it in, but you just got to look it up by another device. And once you select it, it's going to load what you have. Now this one says there's a password on it. There really is no password on it. Let me get back to it. I pressed off. Sorry about that. Uh, there's no password on it actually. I did set up one before, but it's not there. Now you can set up a password. Don't know how secure it is because I set up some time ago. Like I said, I forgot what the password is, but it still let me in. So I don't think it's very secure, at least by these standards uh, or these this particular experience. So as you have it set up, you'll see all your channels as they are on the console. Now, keep in mind, you can make modifications of these channels on your device, so be careful not to do so unless you really mean to. And as you can see on the right-hand side, you have your different channel groups. Right now, we're on channels one through eight, and then we have nine through 16. You have your aux and your effects grouped together. You got your bus, buses in, pretty much your aux outs, and you have your FX and your mains together and the DCA groups as well. And then up here on the left hand side of this column where it says fine, that's just to make the adjustments on the faders a little bit more sensitive so it doesn't make such dramatic changes. You can kind of limit the change sensitivity essentially. And then you got your mute enable in case you want to mute channels. Uh, sometimes you may not want to do that by accident so you want to make sure you have that mute enabled so that you can mute it when necessary. And then you send to faders, basically, you can choose right beneath it which channel you're referring to and do the send to faders there. And oh, I hit the wrong one. And then you have the bus master also for that same channel if you need to change it. See how they're all grouped together in green? You can make sure you can affect that particular one input compared to any other. So once you've made that particular setup, that's the essential high level overview of those tabs, those buttons on the right, and also your faders here within your fader selection. Now, in this case, the SM4 is on a mute, uh, on a stereo group, so you can actually just affect both of them by uh, touching one channel. You can do either one, it's gonna affect both for those devices you may need to have. And you can see also at the top there, you see one is panned to the left on channel one, the other is panned to the right. The little bar beneath the SM4, SM4 labels and right above the mute labels. Now at the very top of the screen, you have a few different icons. Starting from the left to the right, those bars there looks like a little signal strength. These are your meter bridge settings or meter bridge view rather. And as you can see here, I'm talking on one of my channels and it's registering on the one through eight bank. 
as well as the FX returns because that's going to the main and the FX sends because I have it going through some of the effects even though you don't hear it and also on the first channel of the bus sends for the IEM voice channel which is essentially what we're talking on and then you have your real-time analyzer for your entire sound basically so you can check on that you can make minor changes in regards to the averaging if you need to or if you want to change the actual source so you can monitor or you can change the source and you can do a post or pre right now it is uh, pre fader you can do a post fader as well if you like to do something like that and then after that you got those little blocks there these are your mute groups so you can change the you know mute groups if you need to and the effects area is very obvious is for your effects you want to be able to check on those if need be turn them off and on if you need to if that's what you so desire to do the folder is for snapshots and things of that nature things you might want to save as you make minor changes and then your up and down is basically for your routing of your channels typically these areas you don't want to mess with because if you happen to make some changes and you don't remember you made the changes then you're probably going to hear something that you're not expecting or it's not just going to be routed correctly so be careful with making those type of changes oh, I actually went to that one already that's the up and down arrow then the gear you can make certain app changes so this is where you really dive deep into some of the settings of the application and once again this is an area that you want to if you go into it just make sure you try to make the changes once maybe twice just to customize it when needed but don't go in here too often because you may get yourself a little bit confused if you're not careful and as you can see the layouts version that layouts tab is only in the pro version that you can pay for to get more customized layouts and then here's that infamous security area where by theory you can lock out certain channels of certain buses in order to prevent someone from making the changes to other channels if need be so that's basically the, the look at this application as you can see it's very simple straightforward very easy to identify visually very clearly labeled good color scheme nice and neat I do like that about this application um, one thing I don't really care for is the fact that it doesn't give you any icons in regards to the pictures even though the Xair 18 doesn't do it this application could have thrown that inside there so I would definitely you know like to see that on another version that's not paid for maybe the pay for version has it I don't know but definitely that's something I would like to see in regards to another version as it comes out or another application from another vendor another app maker so hopefully this helped you out to get an idea of what the comparison or the differences are from the X Air Q and this mix station uh, for the X Air series is going to be like. Similar to this, the mix station for the X32 version looks very much like this, just minor differences graphically and also the number of channel inputs. So if you have any questions or you have any inputs for other viewers who might have the benefit of your experience, Definitely share it inside the comments. We look forward to checking those out and getting a good conversation started about this app and others like it. So until next time, stay tuned and stay blessed.